Sweat Equity Podcast and streaming show, the number one business comedy podcast in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've got our buddy Max Trailer on. I don't know if he's our buddy anymore because he didn't see us while he was an hour away when he came in town. An hour away. Uh, He's got a new book called The Consultant Survival Guide. Oh, yeah. Learning to make benefit the glorious profession of consulting. And Eric's going to be doing the audio book from this episode, or these two episodes, I should say. Uh, hey, we're uh, the 2020... Yeah, make note of that. You might hear this twice. It's not a mess up. It's going to be the second part of it. Yeah, you're look, you're second lead on an audio book. That's amazing, dude. Yeah. Yeah. What does he do? He taught us how to write a book again. He, uh, <laughs> he talked to us about how he basically did a second issue by changing only 25% of the words from his last book. Genius. And uh, some psych study he's been working on. So exciting stuff from old Maxi. Um, listen to us on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Your Mom's Walkman. Um, plenty of today's occupations didn't exist a decade ago like an esports game coach or a cryptocurrency analyst. From Etsy seller to podcast producer, new opportunities to build a career are popping up every day. And Squarespace is the ultimate tool for the professionals to use to build a site, to market their brand, and to sell anything. Features like I'm going to read this whole copy. Do it. I, I didn't know. I thought we got a new sponsor or something. No, like, I, just, I pulled a copy from an, another big podcast about Squarespace. Uh, features like Squarespace Analytics allows you to use insights to grow your business, so that telehealth <gasps> therapist can see you where you need to be. Uh, I should take these shades off. I'm not going to because I look cool. The appointment scheduling feature allows you to add online booking and scheduling to your Squarespace site. You might have to hit the intro music another time. It's almost done. So that divorcee in need of professional online dating profile writer can schedule an uh, informational interview right on your site. What are you waiting for? Get a free trial for Squarespace. Build your site, your brand, market it out there with our free trial in the description. Hit the link. Let's get it going. Howdy dotty. Sweat equity. <laughs> Listening to the Sweat Equity Podcast. I was going to write one book multiple times. If you do a word count on the how many exact same words <laughs> and chapters appear from book one to book two, it's about 75% the exact same book. Oh, I sent this to Eric in Slack a couple hours ago. I go, yeah. I was looking at some of the stuff. I was like, when I read the book, <laughs> I was like, did Max tell us this stuff in interviews? I'm definitely too lazy to go look that up. I'm having, even though we have having an outer body experience. Well, look, I, <laughs> I, vu. I have a weird memory. Like I'll remember shit that I'm not supposed to remember and forget shit. Yeah. I'm supposed to remember. Well, you take good notes. We know that. Well, right. we've got robots doing that now. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, no, I have to take Baller notes. The only, the only reason I'll take notes is because it actually helps me memorize. So if I do a set list before I go up, it'll be like seven words. And I'll just go, okay, I can fill in the blanks in between that. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes. Or sometimes not write it at all and bomb. Um, But like just by the fact of writing a note, I might not use it. I think you're like 30% likelier to memorize it or something like that if you write it down. Um, I I may have made that up. Yeah, Yeah, me too. No, I I do all handwritten notes on all my like sales calls on on all my workshops. Like I'm a handwritten note guy too. It's absolutely, yeah. I mean, you have a photographic memory. So what you're experiencing is not deja vu. It's 75% the exact same content. Um, I changed some words. I took some chapters out. It's brilliant. uh, Put new chapters in. I loved it. I, once I, I saw the money tree, I put them side by side in each book. The money tree diagram. Oh, yeah, I was the like, money tree chapter is the exact same. Yeah, what the fuck? Literally the exact same. And I switch them around in the order just to, you know. Well, a little three card money. Why not? You know? but, but I got the idea from a, a buddy of mine that uh, wrote a book, really successful um, uh, leadership coach. And I was talking to him and he was like, he, he wrote uh, 
the ultimate sales revolution. It was a book. And he's like, yeah, I wrote the book for the wrong audience because I really decided that my target audience is really uh, chief operating officers. So I'm relaunching the book. And I was like, you're rewriting the book? He's like, no, I'm, re- I'm relaunching. I'm just changing the title and the cover. Awesome. And I was like, what a badass. I was like, that's the way to do it. I was like, you know, all these authors... I'm 15 times published. Dude, I'm like, I, I can right. 15 times published. See, we think, cover, we're thinking one cover, book. <laughs> we should do <laughs> multiple cover. books. Right. No, we're thinking like like it's Google indexing these books or something. Nobody's checking this shit. We could just change well, the title and the cover. I can, Dude, I can plagiarize my own book. Right. How yeah. rad would it be to go? No, we're not you can just sandwich more for the next one. It could be 70, 25% bigger than this <laughs> one. It's got this I'm whole thing send, in I'm it. I'm going to send you an Amazon published book. It's going to be Max's book for law. <laughs> yeah. It's dope. <laughs> and you're going to be like, oh my God. It's going to get that you're customized. Like, yeah. It's like <laughs> Suck Max's that. law book. <laughs> Suck on that, Grisham. Because uh, that can fool people. So. Well, no, I, I, once I realize that, I go, that's, that's brilliant. There's more consultants than there are agency owners. So that's number one, right? You hit a, if you were trying to do that. I mean, that wasn't a part of my consideration. I'm never going to, I'm never going to even scratch the surface of my addressable market. Well, you um, want to get it out there at some point. It won't, it, it look, it, it probably won't be on the New York times bestseller. Probably won't. Yeah, I don't know percentage. Um, but I'm saying like, you do want it to get out there in a certain clip, right? You did it for a reason. Oh uh, yeah. Well, the reason is uh, sending it to people, right? And then being like, it's "Great wow, touch point, this baller move." This guy's really uh, credible. Yeah, incredible. Until, I should pay until, him until they see this interview. And they're like, <laughs> right. "What the fuck?" <laughs> they were on yeah, the, I'm banging on, the on that. Like, don't show, show it to anybody in my target audience if you if you, if you please. But yeah. uh, <laughs> this whole book's no, yeah. There, look, there. There are different ways. There are different ways to use the book, and what I learned from my third book, the, the way I used my third, bo- my first book, is that I would talk to somebody, and if I knew they were a good fit, I would send them my book. Now, half the time, by the time I got to the second conversation, they had read my book, and they would say, "I want to work with you." They were like, "Great!" So I was like, "This is the greatest thing of all time." And it cost me like seven dollars to send them a book. And so um, I'm going a little bit beyond that now because I have shifted from a, a low volume, high ticket business model where I'd charge like 50 grand and I'd want one, one deal a month to a more uh, volume based business model where I'm charging you know, a monthly fee to consultants. So now I'm doing more group workshops. The people that do my group workshops, uh, I get about 20 every uh, week or so. They get a digital copy of my book. If I think they're a good fit and they, and they, in the workshop, they're like, they seem like a good fit. I'll send them a, an actual copy of my book, like the one I sent to you. And uh, it's just like something that is very little effort on my part that gives them a, a very good sense of who I am. And if they can relate to that, then uh, it's a lot, you know, oh, it's a lot I mean, more efficient for me to bring them into a program that, that is, you know, them paying me. Yeah, last we talked, you were working on something with the psychology of uh, consultants. Uh, kind yeah, of yeah, doing a study. study. Yeah. Um, see, my memory's sure. not all <laughs> cashed out. It's there, man. Um, there. And why would you go from uh, high ticket, low volume to high volume? Yeah, higher it's usually volume? the opposite. Well, I'm curious yeah. why you would want to do that. Yeah, for sure. So, a couple reasons. Um, no, the first reason was personal. And I wouldn't have done it for just this reason, but when I work with a company uh, and I, you know, help them create this new service offering and they, so let's say they're making more money, right? That was the reason I was doing it. Nobody's life changed. Nobody got to take a month off of work. Nobody got to tell their boss to F off. Like, it was like, oh, great. <laughs> you did it. See you Monday. And it's like, nobody's life changed. But when I started, uh, during COVID I'd, I'd start to, you know, talk to these executives at these agencies and consultancies and they'd be like, yeah, I want to do this, but Max, I'm leaving my company or I'm about to get laid off or, you know, fook this, I'm done. And I would help them and they would take a month off or they'd like take their family to Europe or they'd do something like crazy like that. And I was like, wow, I can really make an impact on people. So 
I knew that I was a lot more personally motivated to help uh, individuals. Um, but, you know, during COVID, the first thing was the great resignation. You know, you had all these senior leaders at organizations resigning. And so that was like the first wave of like, huh, there's people with money. They're really smart. They can actually pay me these high fees. So I was still doing high fee, low volume, but it started to be individuals. And I started to build a new business model. I created the 90 day challenge, uh, the 90 day challenge, no bullshit. And, uh, was that a ping pong paddle? I, uh, as a, as a way to break it. What's that? Was that a ping pong paddle? That was a, that was a paddle. That's right. Okay. Just in okay. case, Moving on. you know, you need to well, give anyone a, well, a spanking. Finish it. Also finish the thought. Finish it. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't Stick just let it go. It. I couldn't just, I'm sorry. Stick with You'll it. find it. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so I needed to break, I knew I needed to break, I knew I needed to create a business model, uh, that was a little more volume based. So I like to go from one to one to one to 10. So I needed to take what I was doing for individual clients and make it, uh, something that I could bring 10 people through at one time. So that was my 90 day challenge. I did that for two years, did about six challenges, figured that out. Uh, and then I launched the Maxess pass. So now people oh, can pay me a monthly fee. They get access to everything I do. Uh, my defense is a good offense, meaning like I have so many programs and things that I'm doing that they can't really abuse my personal time because I have so many things that are valuable that they're taking advantage of that like, yes, people get me one-on-one, -on -one, but it's not like they're talking with me multiple times a week or even weekly because I have so many cool group things that they can uh, that they can Scalable, do. digital, residual. That's exactly. Right. See, Access there's Hollywood. books full of it, and you can't even repeat it. So that's why. That's why you know. That's why you need to do multiple books because yep, you got to get pretty close. Stuff home. Hey, look, C minus is good in my book. Digital, digital, belligerent. I was uh, so excited. I was like, I oh, I retained something. Blurt it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, you uh, would know that if you read the book, bro. So if yeah, I got a book, straw, we're only an hour away from Sarasota. The final straw was these layoffs. Um, so my business model was about half and half, half independent consultants, half companies. And then I saw like 30,000 people being laid off all at one time. And I was like, okay, these people now have the time to do the hard work. They have about three to six months of severance pay. So they have the money. And they're pissed off at the man. And that stimmy check, dog, oh, stimmy, stimmy. Right. No, so no one said it like that. Yep, that's the tune. So, you yeah. did all the time. I remember. Stimmy, stimmy. Get Still haven't got in. mine. Yeah. I didn't get one either. <laughs> yeah, and I'm. I'm tell you what, man. I'm in the thick of it. Like it's not all figured out. It's you change your entire business model on a dime. And I mean, I was well. I was well prepared. I've done it before, but it's still. You know, it reminds me of what I'm helping other people do and how effing scary it is, and like. Uh, danger you know risky and like you and you have like a short runway and you like overwork yourself because you think you should be working as hard as possible but in reality you hit a point where there's like diminishing returns so it's kind of cool to be back in that mode because i've been sort of comfortable for a couple of years like tom cruise doing your own stunts right you beat, I, uh, yes you beat me to i'm it. doing yeah. my own stunts mm -hmm. <laughs> totally perfect metaphor like travolta making out with dudes right Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Huh? Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what's it called? Um, so you're kind of going through the 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 customer experience, really. You know, the um, emotional customer experience for myself. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because I'm doing everything that I don't. Well, so most of my most of my clients are in the stage of they need to maximize their low volume, high ticket, one-to-one -one consulting business. And so I mastered that. So I'm now on like a new frontier that I'm not exactly teaching people. I have a few clients that have gotten to that stage, but for the most part, I'm like out in front teaching something that I know works. And I'm just like, Hey, I'm going to do this crazy shit. And I'm going to report back and I'll let you know if it's safe. <laughs> yeah. You're doing quality control. It sounds like on this program. What, yeah. so what was like I'm, I'm tasing myself to make sure it's uh, it's safe oh. and there's no brain damage. I can't tell if you're just like you've already made it to a point where you're like, meh, 
I might as well just try this as a user again, just for funsies. Right, to feel feelings again. To feel feelings, yeah. Oh, you, oh you're dead on the inside, too? Business dead on <laughs> Wait, the inside. Wait, you too? <laughs> Business feelings. Um, well, no, I, you know, it, my dad always said, when it's raining, catch the raindrops. And I interpreted your dad, you know, like I, fucking I, I and moving. He's also like your dad is like, off in the shed too. Yeah, your dad's like Abraham in this book. He just walks by yeah. and says prophetic things, and then just bye. <laughs> like, yeah, and my grandpa. Well, I'm a fourth generation entrepreneur, so that's why I talk about my grandfather and my dad. And so I was very lucky to just be like, you know, baptized into. Uh, hey, you're going to do your own thing, and this is what it's like, and watch I, me do it. And, I think that's very underrated, honestly. Oh, Coming sure. from a family, your family, not really. Mm, a little bit. Uh, I've got my brother-in-law and like my uncle to a degree, but like everybody else is like gold watch kind of territory, you know. Yeah, and so it's well, like really like, tough to like explain to them. Saying, like Eric was saying, what, what was it? Your in-laws that was like, "Oh, you're still doing that?" You know, they don't get it. Yeah. Well, they it never was got his it. Sister, but yeah, and they never got was, it. Oh, okay, sister. They never really got it in the first place because they didn't really want to take a minute to understand it a little bit more, right? So it's like, yeah. you know, maybe don't do your squirting bit for your sister. Uh, she's not in that story. Um, I'm not, but I'm not even say she oh. was in the story, not in the bit. No, no, I'll embarrass them if they come to a show. I'll point it out. I go, my sister's here. <laughs> yeah, let's make fun know, of it's, her. It's tough. It's tough to believe in the in the mentality of like I'm going to do some crazy shit that like I believe in and probably is not going to work. It usually doesn't work, but I'm going to do it anyway. And here's all the people that have gone through the same process and have been successful. And then you know people discount it for a number of reasons. So you know it's just a different. Uh, Are you doing breed, your little books? I very, <laughs> do, yeah, I mean, do you like when people put to... little in front of what you're doing? Right. It's my biggest yeah. pet peeve in in life. I know. As we talk Are you about doing, our little podcast? Are you doing your little podcast still? Yeah, yeah, bitch. It's over 400 episodes. We're consistently doing it every week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, We're let still me ask doing. You a question: it. Uh, How do you help people? What's your little uh, thing? How's your little yeah, what's cooking? Your little thing. Yeah. 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 Why knit quilts? Like, oh, sick, bro. Yeah, how your little yeah. macrame is going, bitch? Yeah, what did you help one person? <laughs> Does it take a year to do a quilt? <laughs> um, How long does that take? Uh, well, I so I've come to call these things a noble contribution. You're making a noble contribution to the world. You don't thank care you. if it – well, you do care, but uh, if it didn't work, you'd still do it because you love doing it and and it's and it's like look man you're just out here contributing to people and if it impacts one person great uh and that's why you do it and so you know we got to be we got to be crazy risk loving idiots to do what we do and uh that's what makes some cool stuff out there so yeah yeah no risk no reward i've heard that before Sounds made up. Okay. It's very cliche law. Thank you. Um, no, I, I, I agree. <laughs> there's, there's a gut intuition, I think, within entrepreneurs um, and artists as well who don't want to be called entrepreneurs. But like, I feel like there is – you have to be fucking insane to start doing stand-up because you're terrible and you're like, this is going okay. This is getting right. a little better. You're in and complete you're like, denial. You're so bad. You have to be. So bad. Like – you're fucking horrendous. I thought it was good, though. I got a couple laughs at this weird coffee shop. You know, like, that's your life for the first, like, yeah, four years. It's, well, it's like, a, it's like an emotional form of cutting. You know, like, you're abusing yourself. Like you were saying earlier, like, oh, so you did this so you could feel something. In a way, yeah. 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 Because when you, when you become comfortable, you're no longer an entrepreneur. Yeah, it, it is like an ice bath. I like, was going to say ice bath. Cute. <laughs> Super cute, Fine, dude. Well, you guys must work together. And saunas? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, you're also. thinking saunas, too. Yes. And yeah. and, uh, and Eastern Promises? What? Fight scene? Oh, yeah. A lot of wieners? The wieners flopping around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Diego Mortensen? Don't, don't pretend like you weren't thinking in, Max. Don't pretend. I honestly, I honestly tried to go through all the the uh, movies that had like you know, PPs. dick in them. There's not a lot, and well, I, I really uh, Eastern find Promises. Really, we're not promises we're not, uh, to show you a lot of peepees. There is we're not a, really able to show our stuff. 
Oh, go watch Vigo Mortensen and uh, getting his uh, Russian bathhouse on in a fight. Full on naked fight. A lot of dicks flying around. We just well, wrestle in the needs sauna. A good, my wife needs a good movie list. So yeah, they love that. Wives no, love Eastern real promises. Candy dropper, I tell you. <laughs> hey, I was talking to these two guys the on the podcast. They said you should watch Eastern Promises. It's got a lot of cocks in it. <laughs> Yeah, that'll really. Uh, I'm sorry, it was burping it my Guinness. But no, she likes the books, man. Okay. She she's really into these books, uh, these like girl porn books. Murder. There's always like, well, the weird, the scary part is they're always like psychopathic murderers. I think it's we like saw her on camera. Guy. She's a white woman, right? <laughs> so I mean, you guessed it. That's hot. You guessed it. I mean, white murderers are hot. My. When we started this podcast, like I'd be like, "Yeah, I have a podcast. It's called Sweat Equity." And be, like, I love podcasts. And I go, I I'd look at them and go, I'll "White woman, don't murder. Which murder podcast do you love?" And they're like, "How'd you know?" You I was mean like, those audio stories that they say are podcasts? Bullshit. Oh, and that you think podcasts. the crime rates up because you're listening to it at that time? Right. The fear of fallacy or fear the fallacy of fear index. We're safer than we've ever been. Yeah. In history. But we feel like we're not. It's the same thing. We feel like we're the it's, highest. It's the ice bath. It's we're just doing it to ourselves. Ooh, oh god! Oh god! I got scared oh, yeah. there for a second. Now I feel better though. I never saw it from uh, that side. The yeah, ups and downs. But I don't think that I don't think it has an end in, in a lot of women's head. I really think they they think they're like mini detectives. And uh, my mom told oh, me sure. that's why yesterday she followed like, a guy. Is, it's like a series of like seven books. Yeah, it's always a series of like seven books. So wait, what's what are these books about? They're psycho murder, uh, getting tied up and like, you know, almost killed and then like raped. Whoa! And then like they love it. Psycho killer, uh, borderline ba, ba, raped. I think ba, they call it. Ba, 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 run, run, I don't think we're gonna have that in our book. We might. Just, we'll put it just something for the white ladies of Gen. Just make Gen it like Z. one or two chapters. For the white women. No, we'll do when we sandwich the content, you know, at the beginning intro for one of the episodes, be like, okay, this episode, Eric had a ball gag in his mouth and Law had on black leather zipper mask thing. And yeah, that's how it was. the weird part? That's how it was. That's a normal. Like, oh weekend. my God, I love Jumps it. It changes attention. everything. Yeah, <laughs> changes everything. Max, what was this psych project you're working on before we get to uh, on, uh, on Improv-y Dirty Highway? I don't before this we is get a family to the show. Event? Remember psych, a mission we did a whole statement. episode on the psych project, I think. What's that? Yeah, but you were in the midst of it last we talked. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we did. So, um, like, my advice to people has always been really simple. What was the, the project? Part has, Re- rewind. What was the project overall? Oh, it's called the Psychology of Consultant Study. <sighs> I mean, great. Great. Great right? title. It came a, what was that? Great title. I love it. You don't it. have to have, a, like, a catching title for a study. Yeah, no, Ball it's like literally studying the psychology of consultants. I was kidding, guys. Max is a uh, friend. We could call it like uh, nice balls out guest. or something. But um, <laughs> you know, I, I I wanted to dig deeper into why all of these people I was working with that I was giving such practical, simple, reasonable advice to would break down in tears all the time. And so I was like, all right, you know, maybe the, maybe there's a reason for this. And so I wanted to look into. Uh, uh, the the level of imposter syndrome and perfectionism, uh, and workaholism, and um, the third profile was like jack of all trades, like when you think you need to do everything, and you'll delegate nothing. And so we looked into those things and some behaviors that might impact um, your creative energy. And uh, your life satisfaction, job satisfaction, that sort of thing. And I teamed up with a PhD in psychology and predictive analytics. And so uh, we surveyed all these uh, all these consultants, and we found that there were some, you know, big things, some really simple behaviors, like like something as simple as uh, planning your week on Monday. Uh, that for you know workaholics would have a sixty percent increase in creative energy. Uh, if you did that. And so, mm. you know, it's, who knows if any of it's, um, you know, reality, but the guy's a PhD, seems really smart to me. And uh, we did the work, you know, we were baby stepping, we did the work. 
and uh, there were some really cool things that came out of that. Was that so, a what about Bob uh, reference that I missed? That um, is a what about Bob reference. Nice. I mean, you don't know, like my, you know, my dog's name is Doctor Leo Marvin. <laughs> Doctor Leo Marvin. It's like the chains are wrapped around me. Yeah, I love that movie. I want a wag. I want a wagoneer. Like and that. we have a cat yeah. named Lily. That, yeah, Richard Dreyfuss. Um, yeah, Richard Dreyfuss. That's my impression of Richard Dreyfuss. That's one of my. That's one of my higher pitched. It's more like this. Richard yeah. Dreyfuss. Richard Dreyfuss is more like this. <laughs> You're not getting any Richard Dreyfuss impressions on other business shows. This guy, that guy's going to be big one day. Oh boy. Um, so what? What? Give us some other tidbits like that. I I find that interesting. Like. You know, that falls under the discipline's the ultimate freedom kind of thing. It, you think it's, it's going to handcuff you creatively. It actually well, the, gives you the more biggest room. Thing that, hmm. The biggest thing that study taught me is that something that will work for, let's say, someone that is driven by imposter syndrome. Uh, the feeling of I am, you know, the, the smarter you get, the less smart you feel is basically how I uh, define it. If I, uh, if I tell you to do something, it will have a drastically different effect on you than like a workaholic. So what we found is like a workaholic identifies as a workaholic. They get their self-worth uh, self from, uh, from being a workaholic. So you can't try and change their mindset. That will have a negative impact. If you try and change their mindset, if you try and coach them, that will have a negative impact. It's like an addict. People, people think that's a good term. Like it's a pejorative. It's not a good thing. To be a workaholic. Yeah. Well, so you're you can't you, change it. I'm addicted so to workaholic. I was always trying to change, <laughs> well, trying to change workaholics. So, uh, so what you do with workaholics is you give them uh, boundaries. So a workaholic, what we found is that all the create the creative energy and the job satisfaction, life satisfaction increases comes with having barriers. Now they can do a sickening amount of work. They could work up. They could wake up at four a.m and stop working at 11 p.m. But as long as there's a boundary, as long as they don't break that boundary, that's where the, uh, that's where the improvements come. Yep. So it's not saying you're working too much, work less. That will have a negative impact. You can't work that much. You have to wake up at, at 10 and stop at 5. They'll have a effing mental breakdown. They're, they're, like they're, the fabric of their being they're will be shattered. Rather. They'll yeah. go into a, a fucking... You know, like, uh, like, uh, I mean, I'm not like a hard drug addict, but like, uh, what do they call it when you're ego death? Uh, what's that? Ego death. Uh, uh, ego death. I don't uh, know. Uh, what... No, like, uh, like you're craving it. Like you, oh, you, like, you get fix? off a drug and you like you need a hit. You're fiending. Yeah, like that. Fiending. Anyway, I don't know. Fiending Willie Beeman. <laughs> sure. Yeah, fiending while you're. Keenan? <laughs> Willie Beeman oh, from oh, any given Sunday. Keenan while you're beaming. I don't know. Yeah, I was so just anyway. trying to make it flow. Yeah. But, Guys, uh, I spit yeah, bars. So that, was, that, was the, that was the most interesting to me, uh, thing to me because I'm really opinionated and I know what works for me. And it was just a really cool uh, thing to realize like, hey, people are crazy. And they're all their own different types of crazy. And so what works for me or what works for you isn't going to work for Eric, you know? And so, um, sometimes you got to embrace that people like are workaholics in this example, and you got to realize that you're not going to change them, but if you give them barriers, then you can control it and even harness some of that energy. And, uh, so it was sort of humbling and, and educational at the same time. That's really cool. Um, is that up anywhere to look at or? Uh, yeah, it's on my LinkedIn profile. Yeah. So it's on my LinkedIn profile, this, the, the initial version of the study. But what we actually did was cr we created this app because I got shiny object syndrome. So we created an <laughs> app. I partnered with a PhD in predictive analytics. So now we're tracking people doing these behaviors like planning on Monday, creating uh, 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 barriers. The and theme like your that. days. Yeah. And we're, and we're gathering the data. So now we have this app. And, and you take the profile, and so like you might be a you might be a you might be a a workaholic, an imposter. Oh. You might be an imposter. Like you might be plagued by the idea that you're not good enough. And so we'll we'll uh, subscribe we'll uh, prescribe you behaviors 
that uh, and will predict the increase in like your creative energy or the reduction in burnout and that sort of thing. And then you'll like uh, on a daily basis, you'll rate like how your day is going and that'll feed the algorithm. And so we're sort of building this predictive algorithm of certain things that you can do to improve your life based on if you're like an imposter or a workaholic or a jack of all trades or whatever. What's the app called? Uh, Clarity. Clarity. And it's on Clarity for consultants. Clarity for consultants. It's on uh, iOS and Android. Uh, no, it, it's uh, it's a secret thing that I have uh, right now. Okay, cool. On your BlackBerry. It hasn't been launched yet. I try to do one thing at a time. Like I line them up, you know. So I got the book right now, but the next thing is going to be Clarity, and I'm sure we'll talk about that in yeah. like four years the next time we do an interview. Now you have to come on. When when's that coming out? Man, app development's cool, huh? <laughs> I don't know when you want it to come out. Do you want to do it? I uh, yeah, I I'd, I'd, I'd be a guinea pig on that. I, on the super secret I think meta beta. Eric and I kind of always talk about this show. Business is really it breaks down to psychology and a lot of basic psychology, honestly. Mm. And it's like not that we're, we've we've mastered business by any means, but I'm saying like the more we talk to people, the more the breakdown is less kind of math pain points and more psychological pain points i i feel yeah, like it's a shit show and that's what it's exactly what i i discovered because i was like look man i i my advice doesn't change i know it works and the difficulty is not in how do i give people the advice the difficulty is following my simple ass directions now why do people have you know 30 mental breakdowns over the course of working with me for 90 days it's because this shit is difficult you're the David and Goggins of business, dude. You're was that? Be a hard ass motherfucker. Get up. Do some push ups. Well, oh, there's a reason I send all my clients a, a tissue box. Oh, <laughs> sort of passive aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> um, I bet you're gonna use them, you bitch. You're gonna yeah, wipe your fucking. If you've fucking got an issue, yeah. Here's the tissue. Well, no. oh. Um, so anything else on the right, anything else we can say about this book? That's a cover of your other great book. It's a cover uh, band. No, man, the book, uh, or a second issue. I don't know how you would describe it. Well, it's a secret second issue. I, I really didn't uh, tell anybody. And it's funny cause I know most of the people that got the book had the original book and you're the first person oh, yes. that has, acknowledge that it's like basically the same thing i was so excited i figured that out i thought i was like <laughs> breaking bad smart i was like no there's money tree diagram in this book yeah. and this book it's like those pick, pick, look man pick the eric see it see it dude Find five differences yeah, like you're it. sending it to eric like dude dude i'm not crazy no he did I, he I, sent me a picture where both pages of the money tree were laid I had out to show him. side by side he's like look no I, th- I thought it was brilliant it's like you I'm wrote a book bust his ass on this no no no, no. Um, I just wanted to save it towards the end in case that wasn't supposed to be talked about. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't afraid of it. Um, I am actually no. Yeah, you know, I, if you brought it up, he knew what he was It's doing. all good, but I didn't want to be well, like, that, dude, I fucking found out, man. <laughs> Snaking yeah, no, us. I mean, that look. It was all part of the. It was on, all on a part free of the book. strategy. Right? Like it, you, I like. I wasn't setting out to write one book. I I knew that uh, being published puts you in a different category. So my strategist and I sat down and so said, like, all right, it. what's a reasonable publishing strategy over the course of time? Um, and if I do change markets, what are we going to do? And it wasn't write a whole new book. Because that, dude, writing a book, oh, my God. Blows. Like I've, I've got the time. I, 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 I track every moment of time in my business, and I categorize it. So, like, I know exactly how much time. I don't actually know. I have the data, but I don't know how much time it, wrote, it took me to, wrote, to write the book. It's wow. Like it, it, uh, you think it's just writing, but it's not, there's so much more that goes into it. So <laughs> if you write something that people actually like and are affected by, I think this is how Hemingway don't described it. Fix it. If it ain't broke, like, you know, if you change your audience, just take the same concepts and, and apply it, you know, to a different audience, change the cover, make it yellow. No. Yeah. Oh. Yellow tests. Well, Yellow and black, those are the two colors old school advertising sticks out. Yeah, if you, once you go black, you never go back, but you might go yellow. I've done both. Um, Ew, dude. Not at the same time, man. Don't get weird. 
Um, I didn't think it was the same. No, I'm a, a threesome <laughs> sounds overwhelming to me. What do you think? I <laughs> think I assume that. What happens? Why would to, I ever assume that? I'm always, I would be worried in that situation. I'd be done and be like, well, "You guys, I'll just go do the dishes over there." So, like, what? Do you, you guys just finish this one out. <laughs> yeah, I got Scrabble over there. Because when I'm it. done, I'm done. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you guys are going to make a lot of noise. I can't go to sleep. Yeah. Even though I'm tired. Is that how you wanted to end this episode? On a week, Honestly, I think it'll probably be canceled because of that. Premise? Look, none of, none of the things said on this episode represent the thoughts of uh, Max Trailer. Uh, That's period, my disclaimer. Period. I think you're going to see something else. Yeah, I ran out of steam. Yeah, I mean, us too. No, us I, mean, too. Look, the, I, I, a, think that, I think the point is show. that I'm riding this wave of excitement around doing your own thing. Dude, we're pumped for and, you. Uh, yeah, I want to. I want to be. Uh, I want to do uh, the audio book. He really, he really actually wants to. I do want to do that. I, for sure. There's a twinkle. I'll in read his the eye. whole damn thing. I like it. Well, it has to be a collaboration. Fine. And maybe we, maybe we can make it fun. Yeah, it will be fun. I'll come sure. in if you need a voiceover for some like all the Raspy racist lesbian. parts. Uh, yeah. Oh, that. Yeah. Hey guys, you got my power tools you borrowed? My flannel shirt. All right, look, Subaru's what if running. Every okay, was a different person. I think that'd be funny. Or that that could be cool. Well, a bunch of comics have done it that way. Well, if every yeah, if every if every chapter was voiced by a different comic, that'd be cool. <laughs> Bert brought in his Bert Kreischer brought in his uh, huge his huge black actor friend to dr- say the end bomb <laughs> at certain points. <laughs> I think that's genius <laughs> on the book. Yeah, because he's telling us that would trigger the audible a- algorithms. I, I I don't think uh, that not would if a black guy. But says I did it. see I did see his new uh, stand up yesterday. That's uh, my boy. wife's a big fan of his. Yeah, he's uh, uh, the pride of Tampa. Yeah, well, I I see that uh, you guys are uh, yeah, you've got we some had, badass guests, so we, I appreciate you having me on. We face we FaceTime him un- abruptly sometimes, right? And by sometimes I mean once, and we freaked out like little girls. It was cool. Because he made $24 million on the road last year. God, yeah. God damn. Yeah. Um, I told my wife that. I was like, oh, yeah, I think I think Bert was on this podcast. And she's like, why do they have you on the podcast? I'm like, well, I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> we love you, Max. She's got to listen. Kind of old friends. She's got to listen. I to sent him a book. That's what happened. We're internet friends. Book right. That he didn't ask for. We could have been real friends if you if drove you up. Driven Sarasota. an hour from Sarasota that one time. You know, we may have even come down there. Because you got kids and stuff. I mean, I grew crazy. up in Jupiter. Like, I Tampa's not uh, Tampa's far. You no, know, you don't even recognize this place. It's so we got buildings now, and yeah. like. All right, guys. I'll go. Here's the thing. I'll come to Tampa. Hard sell. We'll do. We'll do an actual sit down episode. Yeah. And then we're gonna have uh, someone with a camera follow us around the golf course. Okay. Rough, but I'll do it. Good golf pun. Oh, I even yeah no. I was just thinking. Of, I swing like Charles Barkley. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. think I've seen oh, you. There you go. And that, I'm not well, you're a comedian, so it'll be funny. I'm down. I'm, yeah. I'm down to clown. We're, we'll split this into two apps. I think. Yeah. 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 And uh, Max, you can get his book, Consultant Survival Guide: Learnings for Make Benefit the Color of the Glorious Profession of Consulting. On Amazon. See, that's why I that's why I need a support role in my audiobook. Yeah, right there. he's he's a voice instrumentalist, dude. You're listening to the Consultant Survival Guide. Get, oh. You're listening to the Consultant Survival Guide. Let's get it clean. Well, I meant like learn things for to make benefits. Okay. Oh, you got to do I both. I didn't understand. You got it. Anyway, we'll work on it. <sighs> yeah, we don't have to do that in I the quit. episode. But with this stupid job. Hey, you got you got another job, dude. Yeah, great. See you, Max. That one that I'm actually excited about, for the record. <laughs> yeah, appreciate you guys having me on. Solid shades, Law. Thanks, Solid man. Shades. See you, dude.